Yo, famous good, what's poppin'? I am Khalid Omari and welcome to Cali Vision. Bosh! So, in the spirit of grime and me going to the uh, Grime Stories exhibition at the London Museum the other day, I'm wearing my t-shirt. You know me, you know, I love a bit of merch, you get me? So... I'm just rocking the t-shirt I got from the exhibition. I got to sit on the uh, fa the famous stairs of the basement. You get me? The 18 year old me was gassed, I can't lie. Cause I grew up on being a part of it um, in terms of making grand music, doing sets, doing battles, this, that and a third. Man's crew wasn't prominent outside of like the ends. However, like it was something fun to do and it gave us direction in it. So. Um, I remember the first copy of Lord of the Decks that I purchased, like, and that was random. It was Lord of the Decks, I think it was volume one or two, when D-Double rolls in on the on the motorbike. And I got that from Dilrill Records in Covent Garden. Dilrill is no longer there anymore, no longer stands. It's probably some swanky clothes shop or something. No, it was Carnaby Street. Yeah, ran some of the back crevices. But anyway, yeah, I digress. So today, obviously, I'm wearing my basement t-shirt because it's grime themed i'm gonna show you how to um reroute the midi and the audio from machine into logic for you to finish off your tracks in it so whatever daw you are using you can pretty much use this method it took me years to master it i'm pretty much um just done it myself to a track called calligraphy you might have heard it on the shorts but i want to drop it on distro because i really want to make use of my distro kid account and also i want to make use of the fact that i'm going to be paying a rolling free monthly to make sure that my tracks are uploaded to beatport as well so look out for kabushka volume one if you don't know what it is it's a play on the babushka dolls isn't it so i'm just going to start lacing out instrumentals every month on a regular but without further ado let me get into this walkthrough you don't know what it is like subscribe share let me know how you're thinking and feeling and how do you get your tracks do you mix in machine or like me do you kind of reroute it into logic and get the ball rolling what made this easier is the fact that i have been arranging tracks in machine as well i never used to do that but nowadays i'm trying to finish off more often so that's what i've been doing but yo you know what time it is yo fam was good was popping this is cali vision what did i do last time i done this in it yo so been using machine for something like 12 years now and um Definitely my favourite bit of software to get started on. Uh, started on a machine Mark One, and um, I've always found trouble um, rooting the audio from machine into Logic. I always thought of it as a long, cumbersome process, but that's what this video is about today. So this is the rhythm. It's called calligraphy, and um, what I'm gonna do is open up a new file of logic pro x that's what i use so i'm going to go to software instrument first and foremost and um change it to a custom timeline because i tap tempo my tempos in it so they're not always 141 140 whatever then i'm going to open a mixer because i'm going to need that um uh, i'm going to select machine with the 16 output so this is important because all of your audio from the machine software would be rooted as an aux. Logic would see it as an aux. Okay. Um, so after I've got my 16, it's always great to be organized. You always need to be organized. So I name all of the tracks. I'm not going to keep that in there. I'm just going to do a little edit. Obviously, that's my voice. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to show you that it's my voice. It's my laugh from like 10 years ago. Probably didn't have to do this. This is vanity. I know, right? This is vanity. That's vanity right there, but who cares? So what I'm doing is when you go to the group, you're choosing the external channels. Now you want to start from channel two and onwards. Fortunately, with this um machine group, it's only maybe 14 channels that I'm using, so I'm able to fit all of my outputs into the auxes that are available because if you use channel one you're obviously going to have to hide that oh so 
So after I'm sure that, you know, I've got all of the tracks percolating and ready and that, you know what I'm saying? I just make sure I just double check and, and make sure that everything is kosher. Because when it comes time to drag it into logic, you need to make sure that everything's on point. To be honest, I don't know why one of them MS-20s, I think it's the, the bass synth is panned to the side. So I'm gonna have to sort that out um, when I double back on it. So just double checking the re I'm correcting the choir re -roots. I'm correcting that. Now I should be right as rain, perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's create a bigger loop of that. So you got it all going through Logic now. It's kind of ready to mix, but you need all of the individual instruments on a separate track. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna select everything. And then after we select all of the channels, you right click and then create track. And that's gonna pull up every track on the side. So this makes it easier going forward. So we've rerouted all of the audio out of machine and now it's playing in Logic. So what, I, what we need to do importantly first is save the project. I've created a new folder as well. You know, machine mix downs, because like I said in the beginning of this video, my intention is to release instrumentals frequently. So, you know, I've got folders stretching back to like 2008 and stuff like that. Some of the 2008 beats aren't even that good, but hey, you know, it's all development, man. So after I've done that, this is where we want to get the MIDI now. So in the right corner, you can either drag it as MIDI or audio. We want the MIDI. So I'm going to drag it onto the channel and I'm not going to import the tempo information. And when it loads it in, it's going to load up a bunch of stock instruments. OK, so these are just bog standard MIDI instruments, but obviously we've already got our sounds rooted. So we're just going to make sure that they're in the right place. But sometimes, depending on the type of sound it is, it would play like that, like, you know, the laugh it would play. So what I like to do is test exactly what channel is the cause of the issue. Very simple beat, but effective. That's, that's what I love about Grime. It's simply intricate. It's got that bounce to it, you know what I'm saying? I've been producing Grime since, since I learned how to produce beats and got into music, to be honest. So. You know what I'm saying? Where, shit man, that would be about 22, 22 years, or 20 years. I'll keep it real with you, right? This part's always a trial and error. I don't, I can't tell you what exactly I've done, even looking back at it, but I just tend to point around and flick it. So I guess I've rerouted it to the channel and put the source as none. And that solved it. You know what I'm saying? All right, just testing that that's all good. Oh, this is a banger. Absolute rocket. So Obviously, this is the main part. I tend to like, I tend to color my different segments. What's made this process easier than ever is that I've started the process of arranging within machine. And um, it's so powerful because all of the different um, sequences are on the same page. And because I've used one group, it makes it hella easier to do this. So lovely. You know, sometimes the notes overlap. That's why you would see a longer, a longer bar. But you can cut that and keep the note. It wouldn't shorten, but it gives you that option. So now I've pasted it in and I'm trying to, I'm pasting it in 
to mirror exactly what it looks like in the Machina software. And the next step after this, well, because it's the first time me doing it, from an arrangement, I would have to double back when I've dragged everything in and I've um, uh, arranged the track the way I want it to. I need to double back and see if I would need to put it onto a blank arrangement, just so the sounds don't double up on top of each other. But as it sounds, it doesn't sound to be doing that at the moment. So this whole process of me doing it through memory, a bit of trial and error, took me say 25 to 30 minutes, so quite quick. So it just demonstrates to me that when I sit down and be like, you know what, today I'm just gonna, you know, pattern up the uh, a rhythm to start mixing it down and get it complete, it doesn't even take that long. I think sometimes we are our own worst enemies, you know what I'm saying? Especially that I've got the uh, Kabushka files or um, exported files with all of the instrumentals I want to drop. So now I'm just gonna try and I'm trying to take the uh, intro now, and that will be the final track that I've dragged into Logic, and it would complete the work here. Like half an hour. Imagine that half an hour. You know how much beats I've got from machines sitting on my hard drive. My God, I have been so lazy, to be honest. I, I'd be the first to admit that I have been very, very lazy. You know what I'm saying? Very lazy. That reminds me, though, I still got to upload um, or even register 1012 BC Rhythm and Prose with a PRS and PPL to be honest. Ooh. Better double back and do that. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'll just hide the machine file, get rid of all of the auto-generated uh, MIDI instruments, and I'm good to go. So let's hear what it sounds like in machine. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Peace.